with the Whitewater Symphony just defeated Mendelssohn Symphony number no. five in a shutout with zero errors. That's right, Raj, completing a five performance sweep of the Mendelssohn Symphony. Boy, I tell you, Whitewater's having a great year, even by their standards. I mean, everybody had high expectations when Chris Ramakers came on board, but I don't think anybody expected this level of success. I agree. We'll get to join Ramakers in a press conference in a few minutes. But in the meantime, let's chat with some of the principal players. Yes, they played such a big role too, didn't they? Like the Yamaha highlight play when the principal trumpet player nailed that high D. What an essential play that was. I think Brittany's down there now with the principal trumpet. Are you there, Brittany? Yes, I am, Roger, and I'm here with Julia Hertig, who leads a trumpet section. Now, Julia, that was a truly remarkable performance and an awesome victory. How do you feel, Julia? I'm feeling real good. I know we all are. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, but we did it! So what do you attribute your success to? Well, Maestro really worked us hard. He really did. He identified danger spots and the traps in the piece, and while we just came together as a team, and we tackled those issues one by one. Now, what were you thinking as you went for that high D? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Read water. <laughs> and it's moments like that. You, you just, you know, I try not to think too much. I just try to let the technique take care of itself, you know, I mean, all the hours of practice, that's what they're for, right? All right, well, thanks so much and congratulations again. Thank you. Now, I also have with me Leah Model, the principal clarinet. Now, Leah, you had some real tough licks in there. Yep, uh, there are some real tough licks in there, but we all had some toughies. Now, the Stratford Symphony Orchestra is slated to perform the Mendelssohn next week. Do you have any advice for them? Well, um, Mendelssohn's no pushover, but he can be beaten, as we just showed tonight. I, uh, I think you just got to keep your eye on the ball and stick to uh, fundamentals like um, balance, intonation, just play your heart out. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, the clarinets, they should watch out for that 30-second note. Sure, they go by pretty fast at this tempo, don't they? Uh, no. Oh, I see, 30 seconds note, that really long one you played that lasted half a minute? Uh, the, the 30 second note in the piece, the F double flat, just watch out for it. Okay, well, thanks for those words of wisdom, Leah. Back to you, Roger and Jim. Thank you, Brittany, and congratulations to Julia and Leah. Hey, and I understand congratulations are in order for you, too. Didn't you have both of them on your fantasy orchestra team? Yes, and I've been doing pretty well lately. All right. Well, we have a special guest with us in the booth. We are joined by music department chair, Dr. Michael Dugan. Welcome, Mike, and congratulations. Thank you very much for having me. You must be proud of your orchestra. That was some performance out there tonight. Couldn't be prouder. Couldn't be prouder. I think the closest the ensemble came to having an error was when Maestro Ramakers hesitated for a split second when that violist rosin rag fell on the floor. Yeah, I think maybe he thought there was a flag on the play. <laughs> well, and I understand that the orchestra's success is by no means unique in your department. Haven't both your symphonic wind ensemble and your chamber singers enjoyed winning seasons as well? That's correct. And your choir is even undefeated. Yes, we've had an amazing year. We've got an awesome group of students, and not only first-rate coaches of our ensembles, but an excellent collection of behind-the-scenes personnel who really see to it that the players get the very best training they can every day. That's great, that's great. So I see you're wearing a black and white ribbon. Can you tell us what that's about? This is in support of National Intonation Awareness Week. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. Intonation is a disease that is a danger to all people. It affects over 30 million musicians around the globe each and every year. Mm -hmm. But it can be cured with proper ear training, musical instruction, and practice. Wow, a worthy cause indeed. Well, more power to you. Say, it looks like Brittany is caught up with the principal cellist. Brittany? Yes, here with me I have Phil Brigant, who leads the cello section. Now, Phil, it has been a full year now since Whitewater picked you up as part of the trade with Metropolitan State, and I must say you surely have been everything Whitewater was hoping for. Now, what another awesome performance out there today. Did you know it was going to be another good one? Well, uh, I, I certainly hope so. 
I mean, we worked hard, we trained hard, and uh, you know, that's all you can do. Well, I, I suppose so. Pretty deep, Phil. So uh, what do you think was the best part of your performance today? The end. The end, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bass and cellos, we didn't quite get it right at first, but uh, then Maestro Ramakruz, he gave us the 4 one on the Plago Cadence, so yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, bravo to you and all the low strings. The orchestra couldn't have done it without you. Back to you, Jim and Roger. Did he just say 4 one about a Plago Cadence? Oh, what an awful joke. Amen. <sighs> get it? <laughs> Because the Plagal Cadence is an A. I get it, I get it. Fortunately, I also get a break from these jokes because right now we can join the press conference with Maestro Ramakers. I'm very proud of our performance today. Every last young man and woman on the team went out there and played their heart out, just like we trained for and just like we planned it. The fact that we made history in the process, well, that was just icing on the cake. There are rumors that the principal oboist deflated the A from A440 to A438. Uh, any comments? Look, we use A440. We use A440 today, we use A440 yesterday, and we're going to use A440 tomorrow. So you better check your facts. Uh, any idea when Anna Brown will be able to come off the DL? <sighs> well, we expect to have her back before the first rehearsal for the next concert. The doctors gave her the all clear. They just wanted to play it safe and test her hearing thoroughly. It was just bad luck that she happened to be passing in front of the trombones when she did. Got hit with that. Triple F salvo. Man, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Can you give us an idea of what's to be programmed for the next concert? Sure, Sally. Uh, Mahler 4 is for sure in the program. We've already got that straight with the choir. Then we'll do a short jazzy piece with the alternative style string ensemble. Professor Townsend and I haven't finalized that piece just yet. Once that gets set, I'll pick one more short work to balance out the program. I'm hoping it'll be a premiere of a new work, maybe a set of variations based on John Cage's four minutes and 33 seconds. This year you've been having the football team run some plays during intermission, which the audience really seems to enjoy. How'd you come up with that idea? Well, I mean, the arts are critically important. There's no doubt about that. But, I mean, sports have their place too. We just wanted to help get some publicity to our wonderful football team. I mean, I lost track of how many national championships they've won, but still, look how much their attendance drops when Glenn Hayes and his marching band aren't able to be there. Earlier this week, Capital City University had a man dressed up like Heinrich Schinker slide down a slide every time they got to a final authentic cadence, an idea they obviously pirated from you once you discontinued it last year. You have any plans to sue Cap City over this infringement? In my opinion, uh, well, I never liked that idea very much in the first place. It took too much away from the music on the stage. Look, if they want to do that, they're welcome to it. Well, there you have it. Another remarkable performance by this vibrant young orchestra at UW-Whitewater under the baton of Christopher Ramakers. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.